Reef Teats is sponsored by Brightwell Aquatics and Bulk Reef Supply. So it's been actually been a pretty crazy month for the water box, so today we're going to get an update. What's going on guys? Devin for Reef Teats. So there's, the tank has actually went through a lot this month. Um, there's been a lot of changes, a lot of swings, a few little issues I've had to deal with. So I figured it'd be a bit of a good time to update you guys on everything that's going on. Now starting with last month's update on this, um, actually probably a few weeks ago, I talked about the issues I had with the heat waves. And I did lose a few of my torch corals. I definitely had another big hellfire and a couple other really cool ones that are up there. And I did lose a few of those. Um, there is, even that guy, you can kind of see one of lost two of the heads there, that one's still surviving. One in the back's not quite as happy, so they're not quite as thriving as they once were, which sucks. Um, again, shout out to Harry's Aquatics, because super cool design. So I took his 140mm fans, and I already had some 120mm Noctua Industrial fans. So I actually just printed some little adapters and made those fit. And then I 3D printed just little blocks that I double side taped to the tank, so I can just hang these off the back. And they're fairly low profile and, you know, blows all the air straight down at an angle across the water. And does a really good job of cooling. I made them kick on at 79 and a half. And I could just watch in the apex to see it on, off, on, off constantly. But they've been doing a good job to keep the tank below 80. Now, despite my torches having issues, the acros have actually been thriving. So, with adding higher temperature tank, that speeds up the metabolism of your tank. Um, and again, same with the coral growth and stuff. And I, like you can see the rainbow loom starting to really grow at the back wall there, which is going to be pretty cool. Cool hawkfish in there. I've noticed certain corals like that anacropora has just taken off and crazy. Um, the stiletta is a fairly fast grower, but that one's really started to take off. Um, even this guy, the reef raft tropicana, or the heck it's called, like that orange acro, that's really starting to take off and grow, which is awesome. Um, another one that I've noticed too is a golden rod so that is a golden deep water anacropora and that was basically green for the longest time so it's starting to get its yellow back which is cool and hopefully we'll get that gold color out of it so acro wise for the most part things have been happy um i just did notice the other day there's one back in there which was strawberry shark i think so i did lose that so there was definitely a few little issues that happened there um, Fish-wise, everyone seems to be doing pretty good in here. And again, on the acro front, you can see some of these guys starting to get lots of growth. And it's actually kind of funny, the flow pattern on some of this, because my power heads are blowing this way. And they'd be coming all the way to the end and bouncing back. Now, if I look at the majority of growth on this guy, it's mainly shooting towards the back of the tank. So it's interesting to just kind of see the growth, growth patterns and how that changes. Um, clam wise, another thing I kind of noticed is kind of funky. You can see the front of it, he got twisted and he was under that rock for a while, so it's much more pale on the front. So now that I twisted him back out, hopefully that will color up a bit more. Um, rock Island, for the most part, everyone stayed put. There's been a few little guys trying to venture outwards. I did decide to try using the two little fishies LG clip. I previously had the innovative marine one on there, which I did like. However, it seemed to. The blue, I wish it was black, because the blue seems to stand a lot more to me. Now, the only thing with this, I don't quite know how they accomplish it, but they always seem to rip out all the algae within, like, minutes. So it doesn't seem to hold the algae in there quite as long, but I do like how it's less heavy and less intrusive visually on the tank. Now, some of my fun from last night. I came out here and noticed there was a nice big wet spot on my floor. So thankfully, I have a little carpet shampoo and cleaned it all up. But one of my reactors were leaking. Uh, my cryptic reactor, one of the little bulkheads on it. So I pulled it out for now, but there was one of these little bulkheads was a little bit loose and I was doing it. So I think I'm going to pull it out and put some Teflon tape on it later, just to increase that little smidge of it. And I was shifting stuff around in my cabinet and I think I must have just bumped it and somehow messed up the seal a little bit. So for now, that ended up involved me ripping out everything in this cabinet last night, drying it all out and redoing it. Um, also learned that my CO2 tank was basically empty or pretty darn close so I do have a little spare five pounder and I put that guy on last night and today I went out and refilled the CO2 tank so the 10 pound is good to go again. Now that guy lasted me about a year and a half so I'm good to go for a long time again now. Uh, the median side of my reactor was also getting uh, was down to about there so I took the meat of the second chamber put it into the first chamber. I was experimenting with the vinegar calcium reactor a little bit. 
I do have my little solo Versa here that was pumping vinegar through it. Now the one weird thing is, I actually noticed is the medium size started to turn almost black. So there's some really weird reaction that was going on. Now it did for the most part clean up because I mixed all the dark media in there again with my normal media. And I did rinse it off really well just to get rid of whatever funky bacteria was growing on it. And what I did is I took, basically just took the reactor full of water and started pumping vinegar through it. I think the low CO2 water combined with the vinegar was doing some kind of funky reaction. So if you, are, you guys are gonna try the vinegar calcium reactor, make sure you dump out all your tank water, everything else first and fill it with just vinegar. So I think there was some weird bacteria thing that was happening inside of mine. Um, Cause Aaron didn't have that issue, but he also dumped his out and used straight vinegar where I just started pumping vinegar through mine full of CO2 tank water already. So one thing to consider if you guys are going that route, use 100% vinegar, get rid of your tank water first. So while I did that, I decided to clean this area out. So I do have the extra reactors removed for now and I just have my single calcium reactor. Um, I'm probably gonna add the cryptic reactor or the second chamber back in, depending on how my space works out. But I think I'm actually gonna add a calc reactor to this mix. So I'm gonna see what I can work for space and what I can all fit back in once I decide which calc reactor to go, go with. So I do have the ice cap one on the frag tank that's been working very well. But on my never ending quest to get my pH up, I think I'm gonna do that and just let it do a very slow drip. Now, for now, I took all the eShops media that was inside my cryptic reactor and I just put it inside the sump for now. That's kind of his temporary home. Now, in the fun of my like perfect storm of all this stuff, my pH has been having issues lately. My impeller on my skimmer broke. So thankfully, Ecotech support is amazing since they distribute NIOS, so I have a new one coming in the mail so I can get that fixed. But without that, my pH dropped because I had a severe lack of gas exchange. Now today is actually pretty darn good. You can see the mountains in the distance. Um, two days ago, you could not see more than two blocks because of how smoky it was. So there's been a lot of forest fires around where I live and it was literally just like looking into the mist outside. It was crazy how smoky it's been. So because of all the smoke, I had my air exchanger turned off. Um, now my skimmer needle wheel broke. So of course I had no skimmer, I had no gas exchange. No air exchanger, no CO2 meter on top, so my pH is tanked. So it gave me a bit of excuse to actually play with a bit of the Brightwell Boost pH. Now it did a fairly good job, but I had to dose quite a bit of it. So I used this at nighttime when my pH really tanked. It was down to like 7.7 .7 or something super low and crazy. So I used this to bump it back up to 7.8, 7.9. Now I had to use a good 100 and something mils on my 200 gallon tank. So, I mean, on a nano, I think this would work really well, but it'd be, you'd have to use a lot on a large tank, but it definitely helped keep me out of that super low dangerous zone. So, this will be something interesting to play with a little more in the future. Now, the other issue I've been dealing with is high phosphates. So I have been using the NitroGuard media, which is living down here. Um, it's these little cubes and basically there's a little air bubble through it. It's basically carbon dosing and it's a very passive way of doing it. And that has been keeping my nitrous in a very happy place. They are down to, I believe it's about 13 right now, which for me is really good considering this spring they're up around 50 or 60. Now phosphates on the other hand, those needed a bit of love. So with those, I did start using phosphate E for the past week or so. I did look at some calculators online and whatever they told me, it didn't seem to line up at all. It's like, oh, dose like six mil to get it down like 10. And that was not the case at all. So I'm not, I might just spend that third party calculator I was using. But for this, what I found, at least on my tank, about 200 gallons, every three mils dropped it around 0.1. And I was at 0.14, I think. So I've been dosing about three mils a day to slowly just inch it back down and get it back down to under 0.09. So that's been working fairly well. And I know phosphate E is kind of a lanthium chloride based thing and I have heard people say with tangs, especially yellow tangs, they can be more sensitive to it. Um, so that's one reason you definitely want to go slower with lanthium chloride. Now I have not noticed any issues with mine. They do seem happy. I did dose it more in the evening and I also did kind of slowly dose it to my overflow. So when I did it, I put some in a syringe and I just kind of poked it through the overflow tower teeth and every once in a while I'll give a little spurt 
and just let it slowly drip it in that way. That way I had time to go through all the way down through my filtration, through the sump, the filter roller, skimmer, everything else along that path. Now it is a good idea to drip it into a sock, but I figure this way I go through the filter roller and I haven't noticed any issues with the fish and my phosphate drops about 0.1 every time I do that three mil dose. So food for thought, but yeah, so that's been working to, to help knock it back down and get back to a happy place. It's been about a week or two ago now since I did a video on the Orca Labs little underwater glue. So you can kind of see the gobs on there. They are still holding everything in place. And I got some right there on the orange Satosa. And it makes me happy to see if you look at the edge there, the Satosa is perfectly happy. There's no die off where the glue is. So the coral is definitely not bothered by it. I mean, that bottom half was dead anyways from falling to the hammers. But you can still see bits of color all around where that adhesive is. So it's nice to know it is definitely coral safe from my experience so far. I can see that guy kind of broke off and I re-glued him up there just to kind of mix it up. Uh, now one thing I'm starting to notice is one slight issue with the peninsula is how close some stuff is to the glass. So I'm definitely gonna have to do a little bit of rearranging. You kind of see like that guy on the Pac-Man, a couple of tips have been broken because when I clean with the algae scraper, it is fairly close to the edge of the glass. So something to consider there when you're planning out your scape and your coral is how stuff's gonna grow towards the glass. So that's one thing I kind of thought of with the rock structure, but I guess I didn't plan quite enough with the coral. So I think I'm gonna have to trim some of this guy back a bit and more just try and bonsai it into growing more up or down or whatever, but less towards the glass. Um, same with the Duncan, it's super close to the glass, so sometimes it gets knocked with the LJ scraper, so some of these I'm going to find a little better spot for it. And same with my little Euphelia core in the back. A couple little frags I put in there a little while ago, they're starting to puddle out nicely, so it'll be cool to watch these guys fill in. Uh, the little rainbow clove polyps, these have actually been taken off in this little groove here. I put a few in the bottom, they started growing away up the rock there, and got tons of those guys. So it'll be kind of cool to fill in some of the gaps. Onto the torches, you can see a couple of those ones aren't happy, mainly the two green ones. Uh, the flesh has receded a bit and they're a little pulled in, so I'm hoping they'll pull through it. I don't know. Um, I've started, I'm going to start dosing some more amino acids, more probably turn off the flow and feed it directly to them. And hopefully that will help them recover. But aside from the torches, things seem to be pretty happy. Ghani Garden is exploding fairly well. Uh, the long tentacles, one thing that I would change if I did this again, you can kind of see long tentacle, long tentacle, shorter tentacles. I would have planned that better. Like there is a green one in the middle and you can see it's basically buried by the long tentacles, especially once they're fully expanded. So he's already encrusted on the rock, so I don't know if I can get it off, but I might try and break off what I can of the base and maybe plant it down below. That way you can actually see that nice vibrant green color because right now it's just buried within there. Now the other thing to note is Ghanis can be aggressive. If you look at that little white stick up there, they basically stung that guy to death. So make sure you leave some little room with your Ghanis and your Acros. So it's kind of crazy to see that the Ghani could take out the Acro, but it can definitely happen. I've also noticed these guys. They're not a Ghani, they're not an Elviapora. I forget the name of them, but they're super similar. It's like a short tentacle Ghani, but different family. Um, these guys are actually fairly aggressive. I've noticed they have stung a few other things. You can kind of even see the zoas right beside them, how they're closed up from when the tentacles sting them. Now they're super pretty, the red and yellow looks awesome. Um, but yeah, they definitely can be stingers. And I do have another little patch over here where, for the most part, they are a little bit of the zoas. They kind of grow around it. So it is interesting over time to see which corals can touch and which ones can't. And yeah, it's just interesting. So well, let's see, I do have... And the purple cat's paw here, I do have a cool little acro crab. Uh, he is hiding at the moment, but I see him most days, so he's super cool. I don't know why, but he makes me super happy. The blue stag's really starting to take off in here. Um, this guy, I forget the name or the type of coral of it, but it's the one on the Tropic Marin Bucket of Salt. This guy can handle super high flow. I've tried putting out a couple corals here, and just because how close it is to the MP60, they haven't been able to handle it, but that guy has been doing a fine job. He is starting to kill off that orange Monty behind it though. So as it grows, I can see the orange Monty receding a bit. So yeah, be interesting to see. It is, I don't know, I always find it fascinating to see kind of who wins and how things play out long-term. Yep, little hawkfish, super cool guy. 
as you can see, like some of these are starting to take over. Like that guy's getting huge. He's starting to get close to growing up to the one above it. So I think I'm going to come in here and do some fragging soon. Same with the stiletta. That's super close to the other one. The red dragons really started to take off and that's a super pretty one. So really cool to see like the red dragon, but it's really more of a pinky one. So he's been growing like crazy. You can start to see the rainbow clove polyps poking through over here. And I do have the big pink gawny in the middle, which you don't really see. It's kind of hidden in there, so I don't even know if I have a spot, but I might try and find somewhere to make that guy a little more visible just because he's super pretty and basically banished and hidden in the middle of the rock structures. Nothing really new for coral. I think I've only added a couple little dinky frags in the last few months. For the most part, I've just been trying to let things grow out and be happy, and the tank's really starting to fill in. Like, it's starting to really get the mature reef tank look, which is pretty awesome to see. You see a couple little tiny sticks that I got off a of buddy a little while ago. They're starting to slowly starting to crust and do their thing. Um, the one down there, I don't know if it was called Wolverine or something like that, but I thought they were almost a goner. There was a tiny patch of the Zoas, and they're starting to come back. So lots of little yellow spritzes. So that'll be pretty cool to see those come back. Over here, we got the little guy of Marvin the Martian and Wildfire. I think super tiny little little twigs I got off a of buddy, but. So all it takes is one little bit to start growing. This guy would be kind of cool, Jason Fox, Free Care. I think this was some faster, it started to die off and now it's coming back. And the little Free Care Pavona will look pretty cool once that encrusts over top. So we'll see who wins that battle, but I think that will look pretty cool. Oh, got the other hawkfish hanging out down there. Super curious guys, love them. Sump wise everything's pretty much status quo down here. I did give the L2 a nice bath a few weeks ago to freshen that up and make it look all new again. Uh, I got the media temporarily in there since I pulled the cryptic reactor because I got to fix that one little uni seal that was leaking. Um, got my reactor, a little bit of GFO, a little bit of carbon in there just so that runs slowly to help maintain things. Got the Nitro Guard cubes and Chato which is all filled in that chamber. Aside from that, filter roller and the skimmer. So hopefully have the fresh impeller next week and get that thing back into its prime. Aside from that, we're still dosing all the standard stuff to the tank. I do get asked that quite a bit. This little hole here is kind of my, my tube cutter since I seem to use that quite a bit. It also holds the board in place. Um, back behind here, we got the Elkatronic. So last elk test, 8.12, was about 8.5 from my Kelstrom reactor offline and refilling it. It's kind of work, dropped a bit, but it's worked its way back. And I had a phosphate test last, so you can see 0 0.11. It's getting better, better than 0 0.18 or 9, where the heck I was at. was getting far too high, so which is why I started using the phosphate E. Trace element wise, we've got the replenish, restore, coral color, and chato grow. These are my daily doses. And I also do have the flatworm exit and coral booster, which I ran out of, but those were getting dosed daily as well to kind of supposedly help the acros and crust. But. While I'm here, some of these are getting pretty light, so it might be time to replace some of these, but all of the verses on the front side are still going strong. You can see this guy for the calcium reactor. This one definitely has been put through the most paces as it runs 24 seven. Every single day, it just keeps on trucking. Now I have replaced the tubing side of it twice. If you are using one for continuous duty, keep that in mind. That is something we need to do every, you know, four or five months for maintenance purposes. Make sure you replace that tubing and keep it in proper working order. And I do get asked fairly frequently what I'm doing for flow in the tank. So the whole flow for the whole tank is currently done with two MP60s. And I believe they're up to about 75, maybe 80%. So I have worked them up over time, kind of as the tank fills in, I just slowly up it a bit more. So these guys are providing a ton of flow for the tank. And so far, I'm very pleased with how everything's doing. And I love not having power heads on anywhere else on the tank. Uh, the other question I get asked a lot is, do I have a top? Yes, I do. A lot of time I take it off in the videos, but I do leave a top on the rest of the time. This is the DD Jump Guard Pro. And I like this one because it sits inside of the lip. And there, or inside of the rim rather, and there's a lip around the whole perimeter, so it kind of holds it in. And I'm also a huge fan of going with the black mesh because it blends in nicely. The clear mesh, I find it reflects the light and it makes it obvious where the black mesh, it kind of disappears and blends in. So I think that's a better way to go. So from everything from heat waves to smoke to some leaking gear, all kinds of fun. It's been happening with the tank over the last few weeks. And yeah, despite everything, I think the tank's thriving fairly well despite all of the hurdles has been. So it's been a crazy month.
but I figured I'd give you guys an update on all the tank hoopla and however everything's starting to grow and fill in on the tank. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. As always, if you did, hit that like button. If you're new, make sure you subscribe. If you got any questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll catch you guys on the next update.